Hi there! Welcome to this lesson on root position voice leading. We're listening to Root Rock and Reggae by Bob Marley. If you're just repeating the same root, you're taking a chord and repeating that chord. Let's get started the now. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, let's bring in the example. There it is. Uh, you're just going to move the upper voices to different pitches within that same chord. So we have a C chord, a C chord, a C chord, and a C chord. And the upper voices are moving to different notes in the chord, but the root is still doubled. There's two roots in each one of these chords, two Cs, one third, one fifth. And uh, the voices aren't crossing. So that's all you need to keep in mind if you're repeating a root. Now, if the roots are progressing, if the roots are changing, uh, the most common uh, progression is a root that's a fourth or a fifth away. So if the roots are fourth or fifth apart, uh, this is the, like the descending fifth progression, there uh, are specific ways of doing the voice leading. So 5-1. has a particular type of voice leading that works well. Um, so descending fifths or ascending fourths, really the same thing, right? Uh, you might also, this these voice leading practices would also work for ascending fifths and descending fourths, but uh, the descending fifth progression is more more common, I'd say. Here's There's three good ways to write progressions uh, for roots that move by fourth or by fifth. And here's what we're going to call them. One is using the common tone method. This is by far the most common and most effective. Um, the other is the same direction method. You may use that sometimes. And the third one to use with caution is the leaping third method. Now what I found is if you're not using one of these approaches, you're likely going to have an, a voice leading error somewhere. And even though you may not detect it, it's probably there. So these are good uh, methods to learn. First of all, the common tone method. What you're going to do is find a common tone and keep it. So as I move from a C chord to a root that's a fourth, a descending fifth away, a fifth away, um, I go from C E G to F A C. The common tone is C, right? And if I move from G to C, which is an ascending fourth, then I'm looking for a common tone. Between G and C, the common tone is the G, and you can see it being kept there. So there's a common tone being kept in the tenor from that progression, and here's a common tone being kept from the in the ascending fourth progression. So that's the first step. Keep the common tone. Now look at the other voices. They're just going to be moving by step. So it's a very smooth voice leading method. So those move up by step. These have these also just move up by step. So here's how that sounds. And the second one. The common tone makes the voice leading smooth. Uh, and there aren't any awkward leaps in this uh, method. Notice particularly how the leading tone has been has resolved up um, in this progression. That's important. The second method, the same direction method. In this method, all the th all three upper voices are going to be moving in the same direction. Um, and if you do it in the correct direction, there's only one correct direction, then the leaps will be no larger than a third. Okay, so here is. Here are some more progressions, one with a descending fifth, one with an ascending fifth, and in each of these we're going to move the upper voices in the same direction. Um, the direction, as I pointed out, if you're in going in the descending fifth direction, the voices will move in the same direction down. But if it's an ascending fifth, the other voices move in the same direction up. You have to switch that for fourths, right? Okay, so here we see if you have a descending fifth, the other voices can move to the nearest possible note in the same direction going down. In ascending fifth, the voices can move to the nearest possible note in the ascending direction going 
um, to the I'm sorry to the nearest possible note going up. All right, so that's method two. You okay? I was going to say on the previous slide if if you move them in the wrong direction though you will have parallels, so watch for that. Method three, the leaping third, sounds fun, right? Uh, this is useful if you want a an expressive leap, for example, in the in the melody voice. Uh, first of all, you do keep the common tone, so here's how this works. First, keep the common tone. We're moving from a C chord to a G chord, so there's a G in both chords, and we keep that common tone. And in the other progression, from C to F, the C is in both chords, keep that common tone. All right, now here's where the leaping third comes in. You can see that one of the voices has a leap. In the first chord, you move the third to become the third in the second chord. All right, so if this is a C chord, E is the third, and this is a G chord, B is the third. So that voice leaps from third to third. Same thing here, the third of the C chord moves to the third of the F chord. That's the leaping third voice. What happens in the third voice? The other remaining voice, it just moves by step to uh, make sure you have the right doublings to roots one third and one fifth. Uh, so the potential benefit of this is one of the voices has an expressive leap. That's the leaping third method. Most of the time, you're just going to use the common tone method, method number one. It's the simplest. So we've been talking about the voice leading for roots that are a fourth or a fifth apart. Um, if you're doing voice leading between two chords whose roots are a third apart, or possibly a sixth, the voice leading is actually quite smooth and easier than, than fourths and fifths. You get to keep two common tones when you do this. So, for example, if I go from this C major chord, C, E, G, to the to the E minor chord, E, G, B, there are two notes in common, the E and the G, and you can just keep both of those notes. When I go from the A chord to the D to the F chord, A, C, E, I have an A and a C, F, A, C, the A and the C also, so keep both of the common tones, and then the, the remaining voice can just move by step, as you see here, to double the, the root and have one third and one fifth. So that's how you handle roots that are a third apart. It's a very, very smooth voice leading. Here's how that sounds. And then here's the... Okay, so that's the best way of handling roots a third apart. The last option, we have fourths and fifths, thirds and sixths, and now roots of, that are a second, or possibly a seventh part, which is not as common. Um, if you think about this, if I'm going from the one chord to the two chord, there are no common tones, C, E, G going to D, F, A. No common tones can be kept, so there um, are other voice leading rules here. One of these is correct and one of them is not. Which one do you think is the wrong one? You're going to have to move all the voices in the opposite direction as the bass. And the reason for this is if you don't, you're going to get parallel octaves and parallel fifths. Since they're all moving in the same direction in this first one, you can hear how there's lots of parallel motion. And, and we don't want to do that because we want to keep the voices independent. And they lose their independence when they're moving in parallel motion. Okay, so that's the incorrect version. Don't do that. Move the other voices in the opposite direction in the bass. Every time the root ascends by step, usually it's ascending seconds, uh, it could potentially be a descending second, but whenever you do that, the other voices need to go in the opposite direction. So the bass is going up by step, the root, and the other voices come down to the nearest note in the opposite direction like this. And that's how you do roots that are a second apart. Lastly, let's look at a special progression, um, five to six, which we also call the deceptive progression. Um, 
when you're doing a deceptive 5-6 progression, uh, the leading tone resolves up, generally. So that can create a 6 chord that has 2 thirds in it. And this is a common exception to having 2 roots in your root position chords. So you can see the leading tone is in the top voice here. And that T should go up to Do. So uh, that ends up with an A chord with two C's in it, two thirds. So remember that that's an exception that's allowed. Once again, here's how that sounds. All right, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, so that's how you handle uh, the voice leading for different types of root progressions. First, we talked about repeated roots, then roots that move by fourth or fifth, roots that move by thirds or sixths, and roots that move by, by step. And each one of those has its kind of own approach. You should be ready for the quiz now. Okay, you can see that double third. Okay, now take the quiz.